हेलो एवरीवन हाउ आर यू डूइंग वेल ना या गेट इज नियर एंड आई नो यू आर प्रिपेयरिंग वेरी हार्ड एंड दिस टाइम यू नीड टू प्रूव इट यू नीड टू प्रूव इट टू योर सेल्फ एंड टू अदर्स आल्सो एंड वी होप यू ऑल विल गेट अ गुड पोजीशन इन आई और पी एस इज योर ड्रीम ओके नाउ कमिंग टू टूडेज टॉपिक today we will discuss a very uh, good concept in transmission electron microscopy that is dislocation imaging so now from basic i will start and going to the dislocation imaging i will solve one question also which was asked in gate now coming to the basics in transmission electron microscopy we use electron beam so very high energy electron beam is incident on a sample and this sample you know it is a very thin sample the size should be in nanometer then only we are able to get some image because tm works on the transmission principle now when a high energy incident beam is uh, made to fall on the sample then many different phenomenon takes place first one is the transmission this beam will be transmitted through this sample then some other phenomena which i want to mention like there will be generation of secondary electrons there will be generation of x rays also there will be back scattered electron then over electron will also form then some scattering will take place some elastic scattering then inelastic scattering okay now the point of interest in our tm is the transmitted beam okay and one more thing is the diffracted beam diffraction is nothing but a elastic scattering now we'll discuss this topic uh what is transmission and diffraction transmission is basically when high energy beam is transmitted through the sample through the bulb then we call it transmission now diffraction diffraction is basically a reflection from the planes which are present in the material now diffraction always happens uh, at an angle Uh, that is called the theta angle and this is this theta angle is called basically bragg angle and trans and diffracted angle is this one that is 2 theta okay now i want to tell you a very uh, a, a very you know non concept of uh, diffraction and reflection so difference between reflection and diffraction is reflection always takes place from a top surface this is a, uh, this is the material this is just reflection now when the same ring can take place from the bulk also then this is called as diffraction so you have seen here like uh, the beam also travel inside the material and get reflected from the planes so that's why this is called a diffraction now there is a concept of bright field and dark field imaging so we'll discuss this now first coming to bright field so according to arrangement in tm this electron beam is transmitted through this sample so when it is transmitted then some electrons also get Uh, diffracted so this is the diffraction this is the diffracted okay so this is the uh, diffracted electron and this is the transmitted beam this is the diffracted beam and this is the transmitted beam this is the transmitted beam and these are made to converge and these are made to convert to pass through objective aperture so there is one opening here so this allows this transmitted beam to fall on 
image plane where image is formed and the purpose of this objective aperture is that it does not allow this diffracted beam to fall on the image plane so here the image is basically formed using transmitted beam so whenever image is formed using transmitted beam then this is called as bright, bright field imaging okay now coming to dark field so here also same phenomenon will take place electron beam will travel through the sample and some will be transmitted and some will be diffracted so this is the transmitted one okay this is the transmitted one and this is the diffracted one so these transmitted beams are not allowed to fall on the image plane in the earlier case it was allowed but here the purpose of this objective aperture is to stop the transmitted beam to fall on the image plane but allow this diffracted beam to fall in the image plane and hence we get a image with dark field you know uh, this so this concept is called as dark field imaging hope you have understood this so we will you know uh, come to imaging of a dislocation so now coming to this dislocation this is the diagram which i have made for this dislocation so you must be knowing what kind of dislocation it is it is edge dislocation yeah you are right now here also the electron beams are made to fall and after this you know uh, at this place diffraction takes place this is the diffracted beam diffraction takes place and this diffracted beam are allowed to fall on the image plane here also same case and image is generated now if you analyze the intensity of this beam if intensity of this beam and uh, according to the position of dislocation now for first case of bright field okay let us take this concept now we have understood right now that in bright field we form image using transmitted beam so here if you see the intensity in intensity is high 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 and intensity is falling just near the dislocation and after that it is again gaining the intensity why because uh, the transmission takes place from all part of the sample here since there is no any dislocation so complete transmission takes place so that's why we are getting higher intensity but at the location of dislocation what happens more diffraction is taking place and that's why we are not getting the incident you, you know sorry a transmitted beam so the intensity is dipping down but opposite is the case in the case of uh, dark field so we are analyzing what diffracted beam so since in these locations there is no any dislocation so there is less diffraction so intensity of diffraction is low but when we come close to this dislocation then we more diffracted beam that's why we are getting higher intensity okay and then again we are losing the intensity so this is basically the intensity versus dislocation position uh, diagram you need to remember this so what will happen if you allow both transmission beam and the diffraction beam to fall on the image plane then it is very simple that we'll get two image one image will be from the transmitted beam and other will be from the diffracted beam so so uh, this is the only concept which is used in dislocation imaging so 
a two beam imaging this is called a two beam imaging because it consists of transmitted and diffracted so whenever we will get some image then suppose we get an image then this will be somewhat transmitted then another point will be corresponding to same SKL plane because diffraction will take place from a diffraction vector plane this, this will be called as a diffraction plane so corresponding to this image there will be a this will be a diffracted suppose then this will be a transmitted okay now coming to the concept of g dot b now here g is basically the diffraction vector g is basically a diffraction vector and g is also g is also called a reciprocal vector there is a concept of reciprocal lattice so this is also a very broad concept which needs further explanation but we will not go in detail about this just you know that uh, there is a vector called diffraction vector whenever diffraction takes place so here I have drawn two cases in one case dislocation is oriented in this direction and dislocation is oriented in this direction in the other case in both cases g vector is same this is the g vector or the diffraction vector in this case Berger vector will be in this direction and in this case Berger vector will be in this direction so suppose you are keeping sample like this and you are trying to analyze what is the intensity versus distance plot okay then you are not able to see any dip during the bright field this is the image for bright field okay there there you are not able to see any dip just near the dislocation so this is suggesting that when this g vector is perpendicular to v vector then we are not able to get any kind of imaging but in the case of this type of orientation where g vector is parallel to b vector then we are able to get some amount of dip in the intensity and we are able to image this one okay so we will able to see something over there because you know how we see things there is basically intensity difference how we uh, differentiate between black and white when we see under the microscope then the region from which less light is traveling then we are telling it is black and more light is coming then we say that uh, it is white so now so we'll use this concept only g dot b so since here uh, g is perpendicular to b so g dot b will be zero so whenever g dot b will be zero that means there will be no any visibility so condition of invisibility will be there and when g dot b is not equal to zero then visibility okay now we will discuss a problem which was asked in gate 2003 in physical metallurgy question number 171 of chapter wise book you can refer also now one particular set of dislocations is imaged under two beam conditions in a TEM and is found to be either visible or invisible depending on the operating diffraction vector as follows. Okay, so this is the diffraction vector. Diffraction vector means G vector. So 110 invisible, 002 visible, 11 bar, 2 bar invisible. So, what is the question here? The Verger vector of the dislocation lies along which of the following direction? So, we need to find what? P vector. So, along which Verger, sorry, along which Verger vector uh, uh, this uh, dislocation lies? So, 
we know the concept that if g dot b is equal to zero then invisible so we have got this uh, this one invisibility so we'll use we will um, uh, calculate the dot product taking all the options so if you take one 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 then one 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 multiplied by this you know one 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 let not one one zero is equal to one 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 plus one two okay so first option will be uh, there will be two then so in the first one only this is uh, we are getting a value that means this is not correct okay so this is not correct if you take case of b one 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 bar then here one one so one 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 bar multiplied by one one zero you will get one plus one plus zero that is again two so this is also not correct take the third case zero one one bar into one one zero so zero zero plus one plus zero equal to one so this is also not correct not correct not correct so if you take one one bar one 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 bar one then one one zero one minus one plus zero equal to zero 